Navy's an underdog. I was having a hard time picking Navy. I he really was, because I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, how about that? <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the White Tails Dynasty. And remember, last season, this exact same scenario came up. We faced Navy, and they beat us to take care of the Big Ten West. Their only loss this season comes by way of Penn State. They are currently ranked the number four team in the nation. And taking a look at the Big Ten West, you can see it's literally exactly the same. And you can see Navy right there. This game will decide the Big Ten West. As in the East, it's a two-team race between Penn State and Ohio State. And they play next week, so that's going to be settled then. Now, in the Heisman watch, they have yet another running back. They have the number two ranked overall running attack. Jermaine McNeil is on the Heisman race. I don't think he's as good as Jimmy Craig has been for them the last three seasons, but I think he's still really capable of doing big things, but we'll have to see. Joey Jordan, in his first year starting, 17 touchdowns, one interception. That is incredible work for the senior. And then McNeil obviously ran for 1,000 yards. They also have Hall, who's run for 608 touchdowns. And then on the defense side of the ball, they actually have one of the best defenders in the nation at 79 overall. He is a senior, David Huffman. He is top five in the nation in sacks. It's going to be interesting seeing him get after the quarterback. We'll have to see how really good he is. So let's kick this game off. We are at Maryland, and here we go. In the snow, these are the conditions that they want so that it's harder to throw the ball and easier for them to run the ball. This is going to be a grinded out game if we do come away with the victory. The environment is really in their favor. So here we go. We start this game out on offense, under center this time. Di Roberto, play action fake, and throws the ball deep over the middle. And there is Xavier Storm for the catch, and it's a first down. He's up to about 800 yards receiving. He's very close to eclipsing 1,000 yards once again. He's a throw across the middle on the next play. Play action, and that's going to be dropped that time. Maybe knocked away a little bit from Xavier Storm. So we eventually get it to a third and ten. We run Bam Cameron in motion a little bit and throw, and it's caught. Storm again, 18 yards, getting him going early, and it's a first down. So D. Roberto shows no signs of slowing down here in the snow. Here's the first handoff to Bam Cameron, and that is a gain of five yards. So third and one, here's another handoff this time. Great blocking, but we're not gonna get to the first down marker. Bam Cameron might have been shaken up on that play as well, so he will step out. But we will line up to go for it here on a fourth and two handoff. And that's Apollo St. Vincent who will fight forward. He had to bring a tackle to get to the marker. And that's a first down here for the Whitetails. So this drive does stay alive here as we continue. Here's a throw to the right side. Price Greer, the junior tight end. He gets about 13 yards on that one. And now they are inside the 10 yard line here from the shotgun. Quick throw across the middle, right back to Greer. It's a touchdown, 11 yards out. And that's a nice drive to start out this game in the snow. I am surprised because this Navy defense is actually pretty good. They've been able to stop some of the best offenses in the nation. So here is Jordan starting out this game on offense for Navy, and he picks up a gain of eight. Remember, he's not more of a mobile quarterback than years past. Last year, they didn't even have a mobile quarterback either. But here is Jordan on the option keeper. He gets to the left side and breaks down the sideline. Like I said, he does not have that elite speed. He gets run down from behind by Jonathan Simmons for a big first down run. So now here on a second and eight, this time that's Justin Royal getting in right away. And we want him to keep the ball on the option, so we are going to contain McNeil. Here's a throw to the right side on third and 10. This time, J.J. Barclay, the fullback. He's been there for four years now. He picks up a gain of six, and we do get them to settle for the field goal, making it seven to three. 
So here's our offense back it onto the field. Another quick throw to Storm. He's been busy early. He gets a gain of 11 yards, and that's enough for a first down. So Apollo St. Vincent checks in. The redshirt freshman gets the handoff, and he does get stuffed that time. You can see the Navy defense, they're pretty good. That's only a gain of four. So now third and three, we bring up the backup quarterback, Marcus Smith in the game. He can run a little bit. He does break to the outside, and he will get a gain of 10. And we do have to grind out these yards, like I said, in the snow, because you never know. These conditions can make it hard. So now we start the second quarter. Marcus Smith still in the game at quarterback. He's going to throw to the right side. He's got Francis Smith, and that's a nice catch on the sideline as that eventually brings it to a second and one. We keep Marcus Smith in the game. Handoff, bam, Cameron, and he only gets four, but it's enough for a first down on that one as this drive continues now as we are inside a field goal range. So second and 10 this time, Diaberto, all day a throw. He's going to try to scramble to the right side. He has a lane, and he does break a tackle and gets pushed out of bounds for a gain of eight yards. So third and three, here's a handoff once again, bam. He's gonna try to fight for the first down marker, but he is stopped just shy. And you see, he's got seven carries for 18 yards. We are gonna line up to go for it here on a fourth and inches. Apollo St. Vincent checks in again, and he's got it. That's an easy first down run, gain of five yards. So now we get it inside the five yard line now for a third and three. Here's Diaberto, just throws it away, and that's incomplete. And Navy will get us to settle for the field goal, making it a 10 to three game. So can we stop this option offense this time? Here is Jordan, run the option to the right side. He cuts up field and does get about 12 yards, maybe 13 on that one. Tackled by Anderson Reed for the first down. So first and 10, once again, Jordan, this time, they run the opposite way, and he's got a lot of room and a great block downfield, and he's gonna get run down by Marquise Dorsey, the junior, and it's another first down. This Navy option attack is pretty good, and you can see they are moving the ball well. So here is Jordan on the play action fake, throws across the middle, wide open, Richard. We sold out to stop the run. They went with the pass. Remember, this guy at quarterback's got 17 touchdowns, one interception. He can also throw the ball. But here he is running the ball to the right side, and he's going to be stopped. No getting around 6'7", Big Bobby Mathis, and that's only a loss of one yard. So third and goal. Here's a throw across the middle. That's going to be caught by Richard at about the one-yard line, but they're not going to get in, and they are going to line up for the field goal to cut this lead down to four. But look at this. They're going to fake it, and it's not going to work. The White Tails are there on defense. We stop it, and I don't know what they were thinking on that one. They should have just ran it in from the one. I mean, honestly, why do the fake? So that bonehead decision does come back to haunt him as we do have possession back. Here is uh, Whitetails back on offense, and that's Maurice Jackson. And that's a catch on the sideline for 12 yards. So 50 seconds left here in the first half. Here we are, lined up on a third and two. Diaberto scrambles out to the right side. Nice block on the outside. And he's got eight yards and another first down. So this clock stops at 44 seconds after the run out of bounds. Here's another throw to the right side, and that's Price Greer. Gain of eight. And now we have 40 seconds left here as we hurry it up to the line for a second and two from the shotgun. This time, Diaberto scrambles out to left side, trying to buy some time, waiting for his man to go downfield. And he gets hit on the throw, and it's going to be picked off. Maybe takes over. Wow. I haven't seen one of those interceptions in a while where you get hit and one of the linemen come up and get it. And there it is, a turnover. And hopefully that does not come back to bite us. But now Navy has possession with 30 seconds left. So Jordan on the first pass, throws to the right side. And it's picked off right back, Coco Bamaye. And he is having himself a good string of games lately. That's a nice interception. And he takes us back on offense. As now we have 30 seconds left here to put some points on the board. The first throw, wide open, Trayvon White. And he's got it. He gets up field four a gain of 15 yards and a first down. So now 20 seconds left. We do call our first timeout. Second and 10, throw across the middle. It's Xavier Storm. He's got it for the touchdown. The safety gambles, and he does come up just short, and Storm makes some pay. It's a touchdown before half. Great throw, even better concentration on the catch and traffic, and Storm does make this a two-score lead going into halftime. 
17-3, we have a 14-point lead, and we are on the road. The second half coming next. So Navy has been running the ball well, but we have been able to keep them in check. The first play, handoff, J.J. Barclay, the fullback. He does break a tackle and push, pushes us forward, and that's going to be a gain of 15 for a first down. So here, back out of first and 10, this time under center, Jordan fakes to the fullback and runs to the outside. He's only got 66 speed. He does get to about 11 yards on that one, and he moves the chains again. That one puts him over 100 yards. So now second and 11, another pitch out to the right side. This time it's Peoples. He's got it, and he breaks the tackle, gets pushed out of bounds by Adam Williams, but that's a gain of 12 yards. So first and 10, once again, running to the right side. Jordan picks up another block, and there's nobody there to catch him. It's a touchdown, 40 yards. And honestly, I would rather have him keep the ball and run the ball like this than have McNeil run all over us. He's yet to be seen in this game. So now it's a 17 to 10 game. This time, Bam Cameron getting the counter play up the middle. That's his longest rush of the day. He's been held in check up to this point. So first and 10, here's a handoff up the middle. This time, Cameron only gets a gain of two yards and that eventually brings it to a third and eight from the shotgun this time. Diroberto scrambling to the right and throws that way and that's Price Greer. He gets both feet down. 22 yards, that's a nice catch on the sideline for a first down. So here is Bam Cameron, 5'6", running out to the left side, and he's going to lose two. And look at this Navy defense. They are stifling, and that brings it to a second and long this time from the shotgun. Here is Dierberto. He's going to buy some time and throw to Bam Cameron. If you can't get him going in the running game, get him going in the passing game. That's a gain of 20 yards and a first down run. And now we get it to inside of four minutes left here in the third quarter. Here's a quick throw on the first down play, and that's caught by the true freshman, Ramel Williams, for a gain of 11 yards. So now third and 10. This time throw across the middle. Trayvon White had it, and he does drop it. So that one is going to hurt us on that one. We do miss out on some points, but we do settle for three. And now here comes Navy back out onto the field. Option to the right Give side. And they're going to pitch it. And Coco Bamaye intercepts it. And it's going to be called a fumble recovery. But wow, what a heads up play by Coco Bamaye, the junior. He is literally having an All American season. And man, one of the best seasons by a cornerback in White Tails history, in my opinion. So now back on an offense, set up with great field position. Here's a throw across the middle. The pressure was right there. We tried to get rid of it to Xavier Storm across the middle. And that brings up a third and goal. This time, throw across the middle. It's caught by Storm, and he does get to about the one-yard line, gain of nine. But now we get it to a fourth and goal. We are going to line up to go for it. Bam Cameron in the game. He's going to run up the middle, and he does fight in for the touchdown. 27 to 10 after this turnover by Coco Bamaye. He's got two by himself in this game. And now we are in control here as we wind down the third quarter. Here's the option play to the right side. Peoples runs to the right side. He breaks the tackle. He's off to the races. And Justin Royal will eventually run him down and tackle by Marquise Dorsey. That's a gain of 52 yards. And they have run the ball efficiently, but they just have not punched the ticket too much in, in this game. Here's another play out to the right side. And look who it is, Justin Royal. He's having a good game this one game. And now that brings it to a third and goal to start the fourth quarter throw to the end zone. It's knocked away by Marquise Dorsey. Richard had it in his hands. That's great play by our junior cornerback. And that brings it to a fourth and nine. They have to go for it now. They're down by three scores. Jordan dumps it off short. J.J. Barclay is tackled from behind. And there we go. And now we take back over on offense, and it seems like we have this one all but wrapped up, and we just need to run this clock. So the backup quarterback, Marcus Smith, checks in, hands off to Apollo St. Vincent. He picks up a gain of seven yards. So now that eventually gets into a third and 11. This time, Dierberto throws across the middle. It's Trayvon White again, and he drops it. His second drop of the game, and that's why he doesn't get much playing time. I have thrown it to him in the past. He has been known to drop passes, but back out on defense, here is Victor Dimitrakos getting in after the punt, and that's a big hit. He hasn't made many big plays in this one. It's been Justin Royal in this one taking over and Coco Bamaye. 
So here is Jordan, second and long. This time, dump off pass over the middle. That's Moore. He's got a gain of nine. He gets a couple of those yards back. And that gets it to a third and six. Under center this time. Jordan throws to the right side. He's got his running back, Adam Peoples. And that's a gain of eight yards out of the backfield. And another first down. So here is Jordan, this time from the pistol. Quick throw, and he finds his man, Beard, just out of the reach of Ali Myers. He could have had an interception on that one, but a gain of 13 yards. This drive does continue as his clock moves inside of five minutes left here in this game. Jordan run out to left side, and he is tackled. And he's at about 150 yards rushing in this one as he runs to the right side once again. And there is the defense there. Jonathan Simmons and Victor Dimitrankos are there. And now another fourth and three. This one could be the game if they don't convert here. Option to the right side. And there is a tackle, and that's Adam Williams, the true freshman. That's a great tackle behind the line, and that's what we've wanted all day. We know if he can get keep the ball, that quarterback, I think he can't really expose us because 66 speed is not enough to really break the game open, but he can get the yards if they do ex execute the plays right. So now we wind down this clock inside of two minutes left here in this game. This time, Navy does get to the quarterback. Justin D'Alberto goes down, and they will have one last shot, but down by 17. Very unlikely that they come back and win this game. Here's Jordan. Dump ball pass to J.J. Barclay, and he will pick up a gain of 15 yards as this could well be another top 25 victory and another top 10 victory. Add that to the resume this year as they throw to the end zone. And look at Brent Richards. He's wide open. 21 yards for the touchdown. Joey Jordan attempts only 12 passes in this game, and they line up to kick the onside kick for a last hope. And we will recover this and come away with another top 10 victory. And this time we get our revenge on Navy as now we have taken over first place completely. And we honestly, if something, if we did slide or something, we would literally have to lose three games in order to not go into the Big Ten Championship. But we're thinking Big Ten Championship. We're thinking National Championship at this point. We are the number one team in the country. We are playing like it up to this point. Bam Cameron was held in check. It was tough for him to run the ball versus Navy defense. But the defense picked up the slack. We made some big stops. Coco Bamaye forced two turnovers. Xavier Storm had a big game, six for 111 and a touchdown. Price Greer had a really good game as well. And this was just an all-around great victory on the road. And we shut down the triple option offense, which is, which is really, really hard to stop, especially versus a Navy team who is year in and year out top five in rushing offense. I mean, it's just a great victory. For this Whitetails team, Victor Dimitrankos gets a sack, and Coco Bamaye, like I said, gets an interception and a fumble recovery. To me, he gets player of the game. Justin Royal had a good game as well. He had three tackles for loss. And you can see the Heisman candidate, Jermaine McNeil, who came into that game number three on the list, he had one carry for seven yards. That will surely drop him off of the Heisman list. So let's look at recruiting, and we do have some news here. A.J. Watkins, one of our top recruiting safeties, he commits to Florida. But we get some good news. Cedric Myrick, who I'm going to talk about in the recruiting episode when I allow you guys to submit recruits, he submits, he commits to our school, but he also is going to be our preferred walk-on, which I will talk about later. But Ja'Kai Betts, Deshaun Harrington, and Alex Kagan all commit. They will definitely play big parts in the future of this team especially kagan because remember we have not had a kicker recruit he has our first commit at a kicker position that has been offered a scholarship that is just amazing to me so coming down the stretch of this season we have three games left but looking on the other side of the bracket penn state and ohio state will settle the duel for the east and that will be an eight and one eight and one matchup Number six versus number three. That is going to be a really good game. And just looking at the overall standings in the Big Ten, Navy is currently eight and two. Nebraska is seven and two. I mean, we've given all these top teams, at least in four through six, a loss. I mean, that is just amazing. And we are well on our way to our best season ever here in the White Tails Dynasty with three games left. It's going to be fun. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.
Yeah, they filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on...